Hey there! So last time we discussed this data lake thing and we know that um, to create it we're gonna use storage account and we have to enable this hierarchical namespace to convert regular blob storage into a data lake. But at the end data lakes as another Azure service is hosted in some data center on some physical hardware that might fail from time to time. So how do we prevent losing our data in case of those failures? What options do we have? So that's the topic for today. So let's get started. Now, you might think that Azure is not that big actually, that maybe there's one or two data centers somewhere around the world. And actually that's completely false. So let me show you this nice visualization from Microsoft that shows how huge Azure is. All right, so you should see our wonderful globe. Let me just scroll to Europe. And there is a lot of stuff displayed here that I want to hide because at this moment we are not interested in these um, things. So let me hide this, this from networking stuff. Let me hide all of this. All right. And what we are left with is two things. So, so those um, bluish dots, they represent data centers, physical locations around the world. And you can see there's quite a lot of them. In basically every place on the earth, Azure has some data centers. And those white lines between those data centers, it's just physical infrastructure, network links that connect those regions together. And you can see that this Microsoft Azure network is huge. It goes all around the world and basically it's one of the biggest private networks around the world. So as you can see, we've got a plenty of regions to choose from when we create our services like data lake. So how to choose the proper region and actually what is a data region? So let's go back to our drawings and let me show you something. All right, so data region. So let's start with this. So when you think about region, this blue dot that I was displaying in this visualization. It's simply a geographical area that consists or that contains one or more data centers, physical locations that are connected using low latency network. And what Microsoft guarantees is that the latency within those, within a region will be less than two milliseconds. So basically that's the boundary, the latency boundary. This is what defines a region. And as you saw, we've got multiple regions around the world in different continents, in different countries. So as you can guess, the latency between them will vary, right? Because it depends on the distance between various regions. So for example, let's say we've got four data centers, A, B, C, and D, whatever they are. It doesn't uh, matter at this moment. A, B, C, and D. And what we would like to see is the latency between every pair. So let's say that A and B, those two data centers, they're quite close to each other. Maybe they are on the same continent. So the average latency is quite small, let's say 10 milliseconds, which is pretty good. Then maybe C is not that close, but also not that far away. So latency between A and C is 50 milliseconds, like this. On the other hand, let's say data region D is a located on a completely different 
continent, day A, and here the latency is quite big, like 100 milliseconds. So you can see that choosing a proper data center, it matters. Secondly, if we have a choice, then we should try to locate all of our resources inside a single region, just to avoid this latency. Imagine a situation in which we develop a sim uh, simple web application that has a front-end and a back-end, let's say some database. And now, if we deploy front-end in Europe, but the database in America, then every request and every response would have to go over the ocean, which would just increase the latency, and at the end will make our app slow. So as a rule of thumb, just try to locate all of your services into the same region, if that meets your requirements, of course. Secondly, you should try to choose the region that is close to your end users, just to minimize that latency. And if there are multiple candidates for Azure regions, and you are not sure which one to choose, then obviously you've got to select the one that contains all the services you want to use. It is because various regions, they might vary when it comes to services that are available. Some regions are bigger and they're just exposed more services, more types of services, and some of them are smaller and they have just those basic services. So obviously you've got to choose the one that contains everything you plan to use. And again, if you've got multiple candidates, then check prices. And again, prices might differ between different Azure regions for the same service. Maybe it's because some data center, some region has some newer infrastructure that has more power and it's just cheaper to use it. Or maybe Microsoft has some promotion and would like to um, migrate its customers from some old data center to the new one. So these are the things that you should focus on when choosing a region. Anyway, once the region is chosen, and you should remember that when we were creating a data lake storage account, we had to choose this region thing. And I chose West Europe because it's close to me. Now, this data region, it has some data centers inside, one or more, it depends. But at the end, this is just physical hardware, physical servers, physical disks, disks that will fail from time to time. That's just normal. And if data stored on our data lake is our most precious asset, we've got to protect it. We cannot afford to lose it if something bad happens to a disk. So that's what those data redundancy options are that are available in case of storage accounts. And today I would like to go through them and just think about options we have and the rules we should follow when deciding which one to use. All right, so let's start with the simplest one, with the cheapest option. So let me draw this rectangle and let's say that this is our data center. So this is a, some physical location in some region, let's say in West Europe. And let's say we've got a end user or application that wants to save data to this data center, to a data lake that is uh, deployed to this data center, to given region. So customer makes a write request. And the cheapest option we can choose is called LRS. LRS. And it stands for locally redundant storage. And again, that's the cheapest option, but 
quite good actually. So what happens under the hood? So inside of this physical location, this data center, our data is saved in three copies. So those uh, black dots are our copies. So we've got copy one, we've got a copy two, and the third copy of our data. And those copies are in sync. So they are synchronized. So once uh, the data that was uploaded by our customer is saved those three copies, only then the response is sent back to the customer. Acknowledge. Data has been saved, right? So in the worst case scenario, our data is stored in three places. So what it gives us is that let's say if the first copy goes down because it is its um, server failed, the rack failed, disk failed or whatever, then no problem because our data is stored into separate copies inside the, the same data center, but on a different disks, on different servers. So what LRS option gives us is protection from server failures. Server or rack failures. So that's the protection we get with LRS. And you can compare it with your existing solutions on premises. Do you have those three copies out of the box? Or do you store everything as a single copy, which gives, which is this single point of failure? So as you can see, even the worst option, the cheapest option of redundancy in storage account is quite good, actually. But it's not perfect because all data is stored in a single, in the same data center, the same building. So what happens if this building is on a fire? or if there is a flood, right? Then all of those three copies will be lost. So that's why we have yet another option we could use to store our data. So slightly better option is called ZRS. And let me draw it. So again, we've got this box that this time it represents a region, not a single data center like it was previously, but a region. For example, West Europe. That's the region that I choose the most often. West Europe. And this option that I'm talking right now is called ZRS. ZRS. And it stands for Zone redundant storage. All right, so what happens in this case? So again, we've got some application or user that would like to write something to our data lake, to our storage account. But this time, data is not stored in the in the same data center, but in something that is called availability zones. And I will explain that in a second. So those boxes are just those availability zones, AZ1, AZ2, and AZ3. And here data is again synced between, between them. And now, because all of those availability zones are stored within the same region and we know that the latency within a region is low, less than 2 milliseconds, this operation of copying data between all of those zones can be synchronous because it's fast. And once data is saved to all three zones, then the response is sent back to the customer. The data has been saved. All right, but what are those availability zones? So AZ 
it stands for availability zone and it's simply one or more data centers physical locations within a region that has separate power independent power they have independent cooling and independent network so the idea here is that those zones are quite independent from each other there are different physical locations different buildings different data centers so if something bad happens to one of them one of those buildings for example it is on a fire then actually our data is not lost because remaining two copies are stored in different data centers in different physical locations and having the independent power cooling and network gives us yet another advantage so for example if there is a construction site nearby and some worker cut our network cable then no problem because our remaining zones have independent network independent power and cooling so this zeriter ZRS option simply it protects us from data center failures so data center failures and of course it's more expensive than the previous option that was uh, LRS and it protected us from server issues inside a single data center and now this ZRS option is quite good but what if we had some wide disaster some regional disaster maybe there's an earthquake or tsunami or something else that destroys all data centers within a a single region in the case of ZRS we would lose our data so that's why we have yet another option that handles these types of possible issues so let me write it down so the next option is called GRS GRS and it stands for geo redundant storage and it works like this so we've got some primary region that's the black box i just drew that represents some data center located in our primary region so that's the region that we selected when we were creating a specific um, storage account in primary region for example let's say it is west europe west europe and now in azure basically every region has its paired region that is defined by azure by microsoft so apart from this primary region located in west europe we've got a secondary region so let me draw it so that's the data center in a secondary region And now 
in case of West Europe, I know that its paired region is a North Europe, which is in Dublin in Ireland. North Europe. And actually, you can see those pairs in Azure. It's here. So you can see that for every geography, we've got pair A and pair B. And we can see that in the case of Europe, it is indeed like this. That the pair for West Europe is North Europe. And you can see the other pairs as well. So let's get back to drawing. Alright, so this geo redundant storage. So this time we've got separate regions and those pairs select selected by Azure, they are selected in a special way that they are quite far away from one of from each other. So if something bad happens to one of them, like earthquake, then we are sure that it doesn't affect the second, the secondary region. All right. So how does it work? So again, we've got our customer who wants to write data to our data lake that uses this GRS redundancy option. So in the primary region, the data is simply stored in three copies. So we've got copy one, copy two, and the copy three. And because those three copies are in the same data center, they can be updated synchronously because the latency is minimal. And again, once those three copies are saved in the primary region, then the response is saved, sent back to the customer. Then in the background, this data is sent to the secondary region, but this time it is asynchronous operation. And it is asynchronous because those paired regions they are quite far away from each other and the latency would be just too big to wait for the data to be uh, to be saved in the secondary region. And actually, you can see those latency, latencies between different regions as they are published by Microsoft. In this table, uh, you can see data from July 2023 when they show average latency between every pair of regions. So we can see what the latency would be. And all of those links will be available in video and descriptions. All right, so how the data is saved in the secondary region. And again, here we've got something similar. So data is saved simply as free copies inside some data center. So we've got copy one, copy two, and a copy three. And this data just synchronized. And now, if you compare this design of what we have in those uh, two data centers on, in, on both sides, it looks quite similar to what we had previously here in the case of LRS. And basically that's true. So GRS is a combination of LRS in the primary region plus LRS in the secondary region. So we've got LRS here and LRS here. So that works like this. So now, if something bad happens with the primary region, like we've got an earthquake, and then all those requests made by customer would be redirected to the secondary region. So data would be still available. Now, there is one risk associated with this asynchronous copy. So let's say that we just saved some data on our primary region and then the disaster happened. 
which means that our data might have been not yet replicated to the secondary region. Because there is some delay, this operation is asynchronous. And unfortunately, that's the risk of using this and this option that we might lose some data if we have bad luck. And there is this last sync time property expose that we can uh, use to check what was the last time that data was synchronized between those uh, two regions. And now there's one more thing that is quite interesting. So in the case of GRS, we've got this secondary copy of our data in a different region in North Europe in our case. And by the way, we cannot define what the secondary region should be. It's uh, set automatically by Azure. So let's say that we have some users in Great Britain that is quite close to this data center. And maybe we would like to use that copy of data for read operations because we store this data there and it will be just faster to grab data from the secondary location than go to the West Europe region. And is it possible? Yes, it is. Not in this native GRS option, because uh, this one, it doesn't allow to access the secondary copy of the data, but we can enable this additional read access mode. So instead of using this plain GRS mode, we could turn on array GRS. And this array, it stands for read access. Read access. Which simply means that if we pay more for this option, then we can read from our secondary region. We can read our data located in a storage account. But it's it can be used only for reading data. All writes would have to still go to the primary region. So it would work like this. But still, this option might be quite interesting, especially if you have your users close to the secondary location. So basically, those GRS redundancy options, and they protect us from regional issues like earthquakes or some tsunamis, which is quite good protection level. But again, take a look at our primary region, our data center. So in, in case of GRS, data is stored again in a single location in a single data center. So if it goes down, then we would be switched automatically to the secondary region. It's just a DNS update operation handled by Azure. But maybe you would like to have something better than this. And yes, there is this one more option that we have. That's the combination of everything that we described so far. Obviously, it's the most expensive one. But if you're really paranoid about your data and protecting it, then that's the option for you. So this one is called GZRS. GZRS. And it stands for Geo Zone Redundant. storage and it works like this so this time we've got a primary region so no longer a single data center like it like we had in case of GRS so this is our primary region let's say that again this is a West Europe And we've got a secondary region. 
So basically every time we've got this G in a name, it means that we have to use the secondary region because it's ge geographical, geographically distributed data. So in case of our second region, here we've got again a single data center. Data center in a secondary region. And as you already know, in case of West Europe, our secondary region is just a North Europe. So how does it work in this case? So again, we've got a user or application who wants to write some data to our data lake. And this time, in our primary region, we have, again, availability zones. So no longer a single physical location, a single data center, but those zones like AZ1, AZ2 and AZ3. And data is saved in those three zones in a synchronous way because all of them are located in the, in the same region which has this low latency so it is fast operation once all of this data is saved then the response is sent to the customer and in the background data is replicated to the secondary region in an asynchronous way. But here on the secondary region, our data is stored again in a single data center. So we've got the first copy, the second copy, and the last copy. And those are synchronized. All right, so again, if you take a closer look at those designs, you would notice that GZRS is actually a combination of zone redundant storage in the primary region. So this is ZRS plus locally redundant storage in the secondary region, LRS. So that's how it works. So that's the best protection level we can have. And there is one more flavor of this GZRS option that allows us to read data located in the secondary region, which is read access and GZRS option. And now, choosing the proper redundancy option is quite important because you have to care about your data and obviously the better protection option you choose the more you would have to pay for it so you've got to think whether you really need this gzrs on your development environment maybe locally redundant storage is fine for dev but for prod you would use grs or some other option so those, those are the options we have. And let me show you in the portal how to set it. All right. So let me create some storage account. Because we are working on a data lake. And data lake is created just as a storage account with this hierarchical option enabled. So let me create one. And you should remember that storage account name has to be unique. So let me call it data lake one to three table training. And here you see that we've got to choose the region to which the storage account would be deployed. And then we've got those redundancy options that we can choose from. 
like LRS, GRS, ZRS and the GZRS, the, the most expensive and the best one. And now to enable this read access mode, we can use this checkbox right here. So let me choose this GRS option with optional read access. So actually it, uh, those settings, they will be, they will create a data lake using array GZRS mode. And actually we can see it here that the replication mode selected for our storage account is set for read access geo redundant storage. And actually, if I would uncheck this checkbox, then you can see that this time we don't have this read access option. But actually, I would like to have this one enabled. So let me check it. So again, we've got read access geo redundant storage. And let me create our storage account. And you might be wondering why we are talking so much about those storage accounts. Why we just why we don't just start ingesting the data? And the answer is simple. If we would like to ingest the, the data, we have to know where to save it. And we know already that we would save it as a, uh, in a data lake. But we want to configure our data lake in a proper way. So we won't have a total mess in it. So our data is organized that it is protected from various issues that might happen and that the access is secured, that our data is secured. So that's why we are going from all those various options of storage accounts. But don't worry, we'll get uh, to ingestion quite soon. All right, so our storage account has been created and let's take a look at it. And the first thing you, co you could see in the overview, bl overview blade is that indeed our replication was set to read access geo redundant storage. And you can see here that our primary region is West Europe because that's the one that we selected explicitly when we were creating our storage account. And the secondary one was selected automatically by Azure to be North Europe. And you can see the same thing here in data management blade under redundancy tab, like this. So here you can see on the map that actually our data is in Amsterdam, in West Europe, and our copy is stored in North Europe. So we've got those two different regions that are used to store our data. And we can change the red redundancy option. For example, we can move, go away from this array GRS to LR, LRS option, if that's what you want to do. But basically, we should think upfront about the redundancy option that makes sense in our case. And you can see that once I changed this option to LRS, then no longer the copy of data is stored in the secondary region that was North Europe. No. This time the data is stored only in West Europe. And because our mode was set to LRS, it is stored in a single data center, in a single location, but still we've got three copies of our data on different servers, on different racks, which is quite good at least uh, probably better than what you had on premises in your solutions. All right, so these were various redundancy options that we have available to set for our storage account. And basically you've got to think about which one works for you. For example, if you want to protect yourself from data center issues, like fire, then LRS wouldn't work because in this case, all of the data, all of those copies are stored in the single location. So you would have to use ZRS, which distributes our data between different data centers into a single region. But if you would like to protect your data from 
regional wide some national disasters, then again this ZRS wouldn't work because all those availability zones are located into in a single the same region. So in this case you would have to take a look at those geo options that use the secondary region to store copy of our data that is quite far away from the primary region. All right, and that was it for today. I hope uh, it was useful. Thanks for, for watching and take care. See you soon.